Hello again, and this is Sean, and welcome back to having fun repairs. Uh, let me turn the light off on my recording device here. Uh, this is actually a revisit for me, uh, another toy of my kids. Um, this one isn't a Hot Wheels toy. It is uh, made by Toy State uh, Industrial LTD. Uh, let's see, made in somewhere in China. I'm not even going to begin to try to pronounce the name. It's called Tankzilla. Now, again, this is one of the toys of my kids, and it's seen better wear. There used to be belts that ran across these wheels here that allow it forward and backward uh, motions. Those belts have since been torn apart and disappeared. But I repaired this a while back uh, for my youngest son because it would uh, no longer work. And from the previous toy video, I mentioned the wires in there, how over time they, uh, because of vibrations, they, they will break loose and stuff. So I did go in here and I repaired, repaired all that previously. And even from the uh, previous uh, toy video, I mentioned, you know, how things were wired up with uh, just being able to kill the sound on the bottom. And I rewired this one to where the uh, on-off switch for the sound actually will turn on and off uh, power from the batteries to uh, the components in there so you could save on battery life. However, when I slapped everything back in, I did a couple things incorrectly, uh, if I'm being honest. I, this is the reverse button that will drive this toy to move backwards. Uh, however, the uh, DC motor, I wasn't paying attention to how uh, the wires where they were going to on the uh, the armature connections on that DC motor. So when I wired it up, uh, if I press the back button, you'll see that the wires actually, uh, uh, the wheels actually go forward. So I have the uh, the motor uh, wired up in reverse. It's a small little DC motor, um, and even though that's fine, like I said, this without the rubber tracks that go across the wheels it's not like it's going to move um my youngest son was explaining uh proclaiming to me that uh an led up here ceased to work so here's an opportunity to actually uh go back and uh for me revisit this toy wire the motor up correctly as well as uh let's see I mean, you can see that the green LED is the cover is no longer there. It's still working, but there was a red LED behind uh, this cover here, and it's no longer working. I suspect that the wires have come loose on that, uh, hopefully, and that the LED hasn't failed. So I'm going to do a short video repair of uh, this um, this toy, and uh, maybe get a little bit of. Uh, uh, electronic principles concerning uh, DC motors. So bear with me for a second. I'm going to tear down this toy uh, outside of uh, off camera and uh, we'll take a look at the inside. Yes, and so here it is for the most part uh, completely disassembled and somewhat of a mess because you know I can't I have to desolder quite a bit of wires just to get down to all the components but uh, here goes the motor as mentioned and I will have to swap out the uh, or change over the wires on it because I have the polarity backwards um, looking at the LED if I was to trace these wires back going to the uh, the logic board up here to one that's going to have the brains so wherein when you push buttons the uh, it will control this toy, let me uh, bring this in just a smidge. Um, you can hopefully be able to see uh, that the red wire did break off from its through hole. Uh, so that will have to be soldered back in to get this LED working again. Now, regardless of all that, I, I, I want to take a, the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, DC mo motors. All right. So, a, the purpose of a DC motor is to convert electrical energy into mechanical en energy. So, 
Let me zoom in a little bit more. And I'll move this aside a bit. And I'll try to explain uh, how this uh, DC motor as a device, how it works. Let me see if I can angle my camera just down a little bit. There we go. All right. So there are a couple important parts uh, for a DC motor to function. Uh, th this entire outside, this is actually called the, um, the, the stator, I believe. Yeah, the body is the, uh, the stator. Okay. And so inside the stator, you would have uh, probably two magnets, uh, one with a positive uh, polarity, another one with a, a negative, I'll put it that way, or north and south pole is probably more appropriate. appropriate. And then uh, in the center, where you know, if you see this uh, drive gear here going to this drive shaft, and this drive gear actually goes inside a housing to... Uh, marries up with a couple more gears actually turning the uh, the wheels uh, you would have your armature with uh, with uh, wire rounds um, and the armature connections in which you would feed your DC voltage into here now a DC motor is also based off of uh, as we learned in about relays and stuff um, in creating a magnetic field and so if the top of my uh, of my um, armature is uh, positive polarity right uh, with this uh, north north pole uh, magnet or south pole uh, obviously like polarities are going to repel each other and um, opposite polarities or uh, magnetic forces are going to uh, attract. Now this is all fine and, and dandy. That, that tells us how we can get mechanical movement out of uh, uh, electronic energy. But uh, to make these connections to this, you'd also have to be concerned with you'd have to be concerned about the physical connections because obviously uh, these wires, right, they're not if they were physically connected to the armature, uh, as the armature would spin in whatever direction by reversing the polarity, and that's how you make forward and backwards movement, the polarity, your DC voltage, positive and negative, will be reversed based off of those buttons controlled by the brain box. Um, <clears throat> well, these wires would have to spin as well. So there's actually an, another little nifty device, uh, a part of this armature, and that device is called the, the commutator, or commutator, okay? And what that is, is imagine that this is your uh, drive axle, right? And we'll just draw a circle here and some teeth, whatever, that would be the gear portion. Um, and then we got the innards, as mentioned. Uh, should probably expand this out. But anyways, I'm just trying to give you a, a simple idea. We know that the wires are coming into this. Uh, the back end is, is uh, capped off as well. Uh, what you're going to eventually hit is basically a, a circ circular metal band. Um, that's not a good picture. I'll draw it like this. Okay, and this is your commutator, and this is going to sit around uh, around the uh, the shaft, and a part of your uh, commutator, in order to make that mechanical uh, connection, is you will have first off you'll have uh, there be your commutator is going to be segmented. Uh, it's not going to be one solid. Well, it's basically a solid device, but uh, it will be segmented. But what you're going to have is are a couple more devices called your brushes. Okay, and your brushes, uh, regardless of what they're built off of, 
are on there to transfer energy, uh, electrical energy into the motor uh, without having to make a hard mechanical connection. And usually those brushes are, are under some type of uh, pressure or load, whether it's spring loaded or something like that, that so that way they maintain uh, contact with the commutator. And then the wires, as they come into the armature, are actually fed into your brushes, um, positive and negative, we'll call it that way. And then this is how the, the commutator is actually uh, what's going to turn uh, so that way your wires can remain in a state of non-movement. Uh, that's, that's the basic principle I can give to this. Um, of course, this is going to feed into the, the armature, your coils. The coils are going to generate a magnetic field that's going to either repel or attract based off of the orientation of your uh, inside your stator of the uh, permanent magnets. Uh, now, this one's a little unique because it does have a uh, capacitor across your wires coming in. Now, my presumptions behind a, uh, a uh, capacitor, really I should have also paid attention and I would have known what was the negative rail. I could have seen that directly on this capacitor here. Um, my presumptions on why this capacitor is in there uh, is to reduce noise. So, uh, when motors with brushes are running normally, the motor uh, can produce sparks, which can cause uh, noise from uh, to develop from the DC, uh, your, your voltage being supplied. Uh, I presume that uh, that the reason why this capacitor is, is in here is to get rid of that noise as it can uh, affect uh, other things, obviously, there there is a um, there are standards in all uh, consumer electronics, including toys, that you have to be concerned with as a manufacturer. So that way, when you uh, and you'll see this with even with um, uh, other handyman type devices like your uh, your drills and your your electric drills and etc. Um, it's more or less probably there to reduce that noise and it interfering with with other things that could be around you such as TVs, uh, antennas to radios, etc. Maybe other devices. So I presume that's why this capacitor is in here is to, to help reduce that issue. It also could uh, be there to uh, reduce the, the spark that would be generated um, when DC is applied to the motor. Probably there to store, store um, or a little bit of the voltage or um, used for voltage stability. Um, but those could be the reasons why this capacitor is in here. Uh, regardless, this repair is going to be relatively simple. First thing we're going to do is swap these wires around. So bear with me a second. I needed to get my soldering iron warmed up for a minute. I'll move this rosin core uh, soldering or rosin soldering flux out of the way. To get a quick, quick sip of a, a warm beverage, a caffeinated beverage. Because I don't live unless if it's with coffee. Uh, uh, where's my solder at? Okay. And as with common practices, the best way to desolder is with more solder. So I am going to warm up this first post and pull that wire off. And the second thing, second wire the same way, and we'll wire them back in in reverse. 
There we go. That was relatively easy. So now, let's move this one over here. I zoom in a bit. Okay, we got that one in place. And we'll do the same thing on this side. I'm not too happy with how much exposed wire there is on the other side, so I am going to trim that off a little bit with a pair of toenail clippers. much better okay so we've got our dc motor uh, wires reversed on it so hopefully it will operate in the correct direction i can put it back into this housing now uh, you can see the gears uh, obviously this is going to spin at a certain rate i presume these gears are to uh, reduce the amount of revolutions per second um, and to work the energy from the axle all the way up to the wheels so that can go back in all right that now should be good and the next thing we need to work on is repairing that LED. So hold on a second. I'm going to uh, try to position things easiest. That way you can see uh, how I plan to solder that back in. Okay. So I have, uh, if you can tell via the camera, I've pulled back the shielding a little bit on this wire um, and I'm going to tin it up uh, where are my nose? Are these hemostats or pliers or whatever you want to call them Now with that wire tinned up, should be able to feed it back through hole and onto the other side of this board. If I heat up the solder on the other side that was going to here, should be able to push it through. And I was. Okay. So I think that will be good. Turn my soldering off, iron off. I'm going to inspect the back side of this board. And you see I didn't fully dismount this thing to work on it. Uh, having it mounted in here allowed me to go hands-free with that. Actually, I'm a little bit concerned about this wire. It looks like it's only been being held on by one thread. Probably just go ahead and break that off and accomplish the same thing for it. Or the way I'm going to do this, this is definitely not how you should strip back the installation on a wire. a little bit of flux on it and let's go ahead and tin that wire up too my son walked in here 
second ago while well, I had the recording pause to remind me that the red LED wasn't working. through as well. Equal have better stability. And inspecting on the back side I'm not seeing anything bridge or shorted together. So I believe we are going to be okay. So now all there is to do is button this thing back up and test it out. Give me a second I will button up the entire toy and we'll test it out and make sure it's working. Okay, let's see how we've done. Uh, I'm gonna press a button, see if the motor, you know, the thing can rock back and forth. We'll see if the motor uh, is still functioning. Uh, the axles came a little bit loose. I could repair that, but like I said, it's not gonna move without the belts. I'm not actually making any physical movement. Test that again. So you can see that. Uh, the wheels are moving. What's the other button do? Yeah. And we've got both LEDs now illuminating as well. So we'll call this repair uh, good to go and give it back to my kid to, to be able to play and still enjoy. Um, don't know how much longer this toy is going to last before it does inevitably have to meet, uh, go to Dr. Uh, garbage for indefinite repair but uh, hopefully you found this video entertaining um, and if you did hit that like button subscribe share uh, I would highly enjoy it if, if you did something like that I'm not saying that you have to um, yeah uh, I do have some other videos coming up uh, I've got one of a uh, gaming console uh, that needs repair. The controllers are a bit stripped out. The uh, on-off button doesn't really work. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned and, and hopefully I'll, I'll have a video soon about it as well. All right, take care now. Bye.